We're often quite bad at talking about the anatomy of the veins. Uh, we're very good at talking about arteries and often not so good talking about veins. We assume veins follow the same routes as arteries. We're going to have a look at the veins of the small bowel very, very briefly. And they don't follow the same route. They're similar, but they're different. And this is important because veins also get blocked. So what would happen if the veins draining the small bowel were to become occluded? Um, so we'll have a quick run through the parts of the small bowel, and then we'll talk about the veins, the arrangement of veins that are draining the parts of the small bowel and where they go to. And then the problems that might arise, okay? <music> is a little tricky because, uh, well, it's difficult to see the blood vessels that supply blood to the small bowel because it's so folded. So we can see some of it on here, but we're going to have to do a bit of imagining. And it's the same with uh, textbooks. Text textbooks have got nice illustrations of the arterial supply of the small bowel and typically not much of the, uh, the venous drainage. But why this is special is because um, you eat your food, it goes to the stomach, and then it goes into the small bowel next. The main function of the small bowel is then uh, digestion, breaking down those nutrients to the smallest components, absorbing them into the blood. That's where you get your, your energy and your nutrients from. And then once it's in the blood of the small bowel, all of that blood is gonna to pass to the liver. So the hepatocytes get first dibs on that blood. Um, because of the roles of the liver, getting rid of toxins and um, meta metabolism and looking after glucose, lipids, uh, proteins, that sort of thing. And then the blood has to pass through the liver to get to the inferior vena cava in there. So that's the general flow through. What then are the parts of the small bowel? Um, all right, take the liver out. That's what I mean about the inferior vena cava in there. Here's the stomach, take the stomach out. So the stomach is sending its contents into the first part of the small intestine. We'll take the transverse colon out. And what we see here is we see the duodenum curving around the pancreas. And then the duodenum will feed into the rest of the small bowel, uh, jejunum eventually becoming ileum over in this quadrant somewhere. So we have to consider the duodenum, the jejunum and the ileum. So let's start down at the ileum end, the distal most part, because the ileum is going to um, pass its contents into the cecum, so the first part of the ascending colon. So let's work our way backwards. And we can already see a lot of vessels here. So the main vein we're interested in is the superior mesenteric vein. We talk about foregut, midgut, and hindgut embryologically, and that's useful for adult anatomy because the foregut is supplied with blood by the celiac trunk, the branch of the aorta up here. The midgut is supplied with blood by the superior mesenteric artery, the second anterior branch. Where's the third? Are we missing a... Um, and the, the hindgut is supplied with blood by uh, the inferior mesenteric artery, a branch down here. Um, so we are looking at the small bowel. The small bowel is part of the midgut, so it receives blood from the superior mesenteric artery, so it's going to drain blood back to the superior mesenteric vein, the venous equivalent. But it's a bit different because, so this is a very, very long tube, and along the length of that tube, there are very short, straight veins. So imagine you've got capillaries in the wall of the tissue there, and the, the venous side of the capillaries, those tiny venules are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and they, they form small veins. So we have straight veins, draining blood from the wall of the small intestine along the length. And then those straight veins will drain into um, many other smaller veins. Um, and what we can see in here, uh, so if I turn this around, we can see the mesentery of the small bowel. The purpose of the mesentery in the small, of the small bowel is to let the bowel move around, but also to carry arteries, veins, lymphatics, nerves, and what have you to the small bowel from the posterior abdominal wall. So in here, we're seeing the cut edges of multiple arteries and multiple veins. So there are multiple, jejun uh, there are multiple ileal veins at this end, multiple jejunal veins at that end, and each of those veins will drain individually into the superior mesenteric vein. 
So the colour here is a little bit muted. We've got a little bit of a pink, a little bit of a purple, and I think the colour here is muted to show that these blood vessels are within the mesentery, so they're covered by a layer of peritoneum. They're between two layers of peritoneum. Um, and the quality of the blood is a little bit different because what we're talking about here is we're talking about veins that are passing from one organ to another organ, which means this is a portal venous system. These aren't veins that are going back to the heart, these are veins that are going from one organ to another organ, then back to the heart. So these are portal veins. The quality of the blood is a little bit different. The oxygen has been used up, um, but the blood is full of nutrients. And there's a fairly high CO2 content because they've already been through the capillary beds of one tissue, right? So from the ileum, we have lots of straight veins coming together draining into ileal veins, which are draining into the superior mesenteric vein. The jejunum, again, we have lots of straight veins coming together, draining into jejunal veins, and those drain individually into the superior uh, mesenteric vein. And that means there are lots of links between all of these veins. There are lots of anastomoses. There are lots of routes of potential collateral circulation, which is a good thing. So if these small veins in here did get occluded, the blood could probably go around that occlusion and still get back to the superior vena cava. Okay, so how do I know that this is superior vena cava, superior mesenteric vein, sorry. How do I know that this is the superior mesenteric vein and that this is the superior mesenteric artery? Well, if I take this out and turn it around, uh, here we see the superior mesenteric artery branching from the aorta. So next to it, running with it, will be the superior mesenteric vein. But like I said, this doesn't go straight back to the inferior vena cava. Um, so that is where the superior mesenteric vein runs and all those branches then drain into it. I'm going to try and imagine all that in 3D. Lots of, we can kind of see the arcade shape that we imagine here and the straight arteries and veins. These are the veins and arteries of the, of the large bowel, the ascending colon and the descending colon. Okay, that's the ileum and the jejunum taken care of. What about the duodenum then? Well, I said that the duodenum curls around the pancreas. The other thing about the duodenum is that the duodenum is where the foregut meets the midgut. Um, so there's an overlapping blood supply here, which means that um, the veins of the distal half of the duodenum will drain back to the superior mesenteric vein, but the veins of the proximal part of the duodenum are a little bit different. The arteries would come from the celiac trunk uh, and from the superior mesenteric arteries. What we've got here we find arcades, we find pancreatico duodenal arteries and veins. So pancreatico duodenal veins are running in the curve around here. And there is a pancreatico duodenal vein anteriorly, and there's a pancreatico duodenal vein posteriorly. And because it's an arcade, so a C shape running around the C shape, and the blood is actually running in the veins in those two directions rather than being one continuous vein, we then call these veins the, the superior anterior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the inferior anterior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And then you've got posterior versions of that, of that as well. So a posterior superior pancreaticoduodenal artery on the posterior side and a posterior inferior pancreaticoduodenal on the posterior side. Fun, huh? I've got another model. Look, here's a model of the pancreas here, and we can see the curve of the artery around here, the pancreaticoduodenal artery. Um, so remember there's a vein, or imagine that there's a vein running with it as well. So this would be the inferior anterior pancreaticoduodenal artery and vein. This would be the superior uh, anterior pancreaticoduodenal artery and vein. Nothing on the other side. What does this mean then? Well, to add another bit to the flow, the superior mesenteric vein that we see here will meet the splenic vein here. Do you see how there's the spleen, splenic artery and splenic vein are over here. So 
If I turn that around, there's the splenic vein there. So here's the splenic vein meeting with the superior mesenteric vein. Um, and they come together to form the hepatic portal vein. And the hepatic portal vein is the vein then that's going to carry all that blood to the liver, um, which we see. So it runs in the lesser omentum, uh, the connective tissue between the stomach and the liver. And we see it here. Um, if I lift the liver up like that, there's the hepatic portal vein entering the hilum of the liver. Um, and you can see it running with an artery there, the hepatic artery proper that's supplying arterial blood to the liver. So the hepatic portal vein is going to divide into two branches and enter the liver. And then the blood is going to pass through microscopic channels between rows of hepatocytes. So hepatocytes have got direct access to the blood because that's what they need to do, the work that they need to do. So this blood will pass through all those microscopic channels and then collect in hepatic veins. And because the liver surrounds the inferior vena cava, those hepatic veins will drain directly into the inferior vena cava, which will then take the blood back to the heart, back to the right atrium. Now, to complete all this, this then means that there's the superior mesenteric vein. Ileal veins and jejunal veins drain into the superior mesenteric vein. The inferior pancreatico-duodenal veins will drain into the superior mesenteric vein. But the superior pancreatico-duodenal veins will drain into the hepatic portal vein, because that's what's up at this end of the duodenum. There's the duodenum, there's the hepatic portal vein, so the superior pancreatico-duodenal veins will drain into the hepatic portal vein, but all of that blood will make its way into the hepatic portal vein and then into the liver. Okay, what might the problems be of all of this? Well, um, arteries supply blood to the small bowel. Blood passes through the capillaries in the wall of the small bowel. Blood leaves the capillaries of the small bowel into the veins that we've just described. If the vein or one of the veins, uh, particularly a major vein, if a vein after those anastomoses, if the superior mesenteric vein itself was to become occluded by a clot, a blood clot, a thrombus, or maybe a septic embolus, you know, from an infection, what have you, if blood couldn't pass through the superior mesenteric vein, then the arterial blood can still pass into the bowel. So you'd see maybe edema, uh, congestion, um, maybe even um, because, of course, the blood can pass into the bowel, but would struggle to leave the bowel, you might get dilation of the veins there and bleeding uh, within the tissue. Um, but also, you're going to then have a problem of passing blood into the small bowel, through the small bowel and out of the small bowel. So it is going to restrict blood flow, which will lead to ischemia, which could then lead to, you know, uh, infarction and necrosis and damage to the bowel and uh, sepsis and what have you. So limiting blood flow from the small bowel will have an effect on blood flow to the small bowel. Um, it's a little bit, I think it, it's, um, it's less common because of all of those anastomoses, because you've got lots and lots of um, straight veins linking to multiple ileal veins and jejunal veins, and those all link up. So you've got lots of anastomoses in the mesentery. So the later that clot forms, the more of that venous network is blocked, the greater the risk of uh, causing a, a problem, right? And then the other thing we consider when we understand all of this anatomy um, is um, a portosystemic anastomosis. So I've talked about that elsewhere, do a little search for that if you haven't seen it already. But um, all of the blood from the gastrointestinal tract has to pass through the liver, plus blood from the pancreas and the spleen. And as I said, that blood is passing through microscopic channels in the liver. With liver disease, the liver can become fibrosed. More fibrous tissue is in the liver than there should be. So those microscopic channels start to get blocked. It gets much harder to pass all of this blood through the liver 
and yet there are lots of veins linking to the superior vena cava through alternate routes, and those are the portosystemic anastomoses. Those are routes by which the blood from the bowel, instead of passing through the liver, can take other routes, will take other routes because the resistance to flow will be lower, and then pass back to the superior vena cava and uh, continue um, circulating around the body. Um, but those veins in those anastomoses uh, will likely be taking more blood than normal. Veins are not as strong as arteries. Veins are quite easily occluded, uh, quite easily compressed rather, um, which means that if you pass more blood through those veins, those veins will become dilated. So there is a risk again of, of, um, of hemorrhage. Talking of veins being easily um, compressed, actually, so yeah, with the, the veins of the small bowel, not only might they be blocked by a thrombus, but they could also be compressed by a mass such as a tumour in the abdomen. Sorry, just popped into my head that one. Okay, that's it. We've talked about the venous drainage of the small bowel. It's pretty straightforward. We start with the straight veins and we talk about the veins named after the part of the small intestine they're draining. Uh, pretty much all of them drain to the superior mesenteric vein, which will meet with the splenic vein to form the hepatic portal vein. The duodenum, the proximal half of the duodenum, being part of the foregut, will send its superior pancreaticoduodenal veins up to the hepatic portal vein. But the principle is the same. All right. I hope that was useful. See you next week. <laughs>